Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Neil Ellis here. I've got uh, Taylor on here from Bounds on Tour. So, Taylor, as always, it's been, I know it's been a while you've been busy and stuff, but great to have you on, mate. How, how's things? Yeah, thank you for having me on once again. It's a pleasure. Looking forward to talking bounds related stuff, and I'm doing all right. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Uh, more or less halfway through the season, and I think we're sitting pretty, pretty healthy uh, with a couple of games in hand. Uh, just a bit of a tech, I mean, on, on Michael Duff. You know, he got his manager at uh, month for War for November. I think rightly deserved and all. Uh, I think he's done a, a, a right job at, while he's been here, uh, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. He, you could say he had limited resources when he first came in. Obviously, he took over a bad situation from last season regarding the board, the quality of players we had, and obviously how the fans were feeling towards the club. So he had a lot to work with. He had a lot to turn around, and I think he's done a good job. Um, if you think about it on paper, it's, He's still not had a transfer window under his belt, so hopefully January can be a bit of fresh air for him. He can bring in some assets that he needs and he can put on what he's put on to what he's already got us to so far. Because for me, for the for the for the squad depth we've got, it's not the best compared to some of the other teams in the league. Uh, we've had a lot of youngsters on the bench, a lot of youngsters making debuts. It's obviously great to see where you want your best eleven on pitch um, at every possible moment. So if he can bring some of his players in, we can get some of the injured players back, and he can build on what he's already done with the squad. I think we could be looking at a decent year without being too optimistic. No, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, it was highly, well, I think a lot of Bounty fans were calling out for a striker, won't we, uh, in transfer window, but we identified it. And I kind of look at it like now, thinking, you know what, if it, if it had probably could, could have got that striker in, you know, could we have been a bit further up? I know we, we're fourth at the minute. Uh, we had a pretty tough start at season. You know, we played some, at, I mean, some of the teams that are up there now, we've played them. Went through a bit of a blip, but again, what pleasing to, for me and probably pleasing for everybody, like what you're saying, home, going home and away and Duff and his team, is that the players have come out of that bit of a, a, bit of a bad drop and they've responded. And I think they've responded in the right manner and there seems to be a lot more togetherness, a lot more belief in players where I can see anyway. Yeah, it, def- it definitely feels that way. This comes back to the point I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. About obviously the togetherness with the team, the links to the players and the fans uh, on and off the pitch, there wasn't much of it. Obviously, when we brought Duff in, um, we obviously knew what he did at Cheltenham, doing a great job there with very limited resources, getting them the highest finish in League One. So we knew we, knew we had a, a guy coming in that were going to come with a plan and an approach. And I think the way he's made, he spoke about it himself in some press conference in the past, getting that connection between the fans and the players back is one of his main aims, of course, as well as winning games. So I think what he's done and what he's had to work with has been very good. And I'm hoping uh, we can keep him for a bit. Because I remember at the start of the season, he says he's only ever been at two clubs in his career, which is Burnley and Cheltenham, if I'm correct, for yeah. play, playing and managing. And he doesn't join a team for step, to be a stepping stone. I know we've heard that before. But I feel like this guy could be different. We could have him for a few years. And we can actually build something around him that he's going to keep and enjoy and we can enjoy to watch. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, good point, Matt, mate. Uh, consistency, I think, is going to be key and something to build on. Um, and we've seen it in the past before where it's been not just like players but managers as well, a bit of a revolving door. Uh, and it, it, it'd be great to see someone like Duff and, you know, put foundations down. Uh, and not just this team as well. You can see it through academy such as like Bobby Assel uh, and Devane, you know, in, uh, Academy before and Nicky Eden doing a great job as well with under 18. So you can see that bit of the uh, building blocks are starting and we're starting to see, like you said, touched on earlier before, your young, younger players coming from bench. You don't want to rely on them, but it's nice to see, such as a Jallo or a young Dyer. You know, there's a uh, Matty Wolf come back from injury. Again, all products that you've set up. Um, I know you touched about it on there a bit earlier, Taylor, about the building fan base up with the connection with team and stuff like that. There's been and there's been a bit of debate on last week or two. Uh, on social media about such as like atmosphere at all well and stuff like that and obviously you go to a lot of away games you know you're ever present kind of thing I kind of put it down to you know fall intend uh fall out season tickets sorry from the season I'm near about were a vocal part in it as well but I've been to some away uh, games and it does seem to be a lot more bouncing a lot more better atmosphere and togetherness what can you put it down to? Is, is it a simple fix? Is it something what needs to be looked at and addressed? And you know, come, you know, people will say, yeah, we put a winning side out on pitch and it'll come. But when we won at, at weekend, 
he sends a right weird atmosphere for me. Even Bobby won two out, mate. Yeah, it, it, it's a hard, hard one. I don't think there's a straight answer. I think it's a mm. mixture of multiple things. Obviously, having a winning side, you get um, you get a happier crowd, you get more noise, you get more atmosphere. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's solely the case because, like you, like you mentioned, the few away games you've been to. Obviously, I've been to ninety eight percent of the away games this year. Um, it's a whole di- different atmosphere. I feel like. When it comes to away games, you know, people are out drinking with their mates. And I feel like, I'm not saying the fans that don't go to the away games are not loyal and true Barnsley fans, but I feel like at the away games, they're the fans that, like, obviously people have the financial issues. Some mm-hmm. people can't be- get there. But at the away games, I feel like they want to be there more. And, like, it's hard to explain. Like, mm. the more together, it feels more of a family at the away game. You're all in that one stand. You're in this, it's like in a day the, art, isn't it? It's like, like it's a family c- uh, connection. You go to the same. Yeah. yeah. Me, 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 but, yeah. But then at home games, it's like, obviously, the Ponty end is our, you would you would say it's our, our noisier stand. Obviously, I sit in the East stand, mm. so I can't have much say on that. But it feels like, because of the low, low attendance is obviously dropping, it feels like we're all spread out. Um, mm. All them lads that usually sit down that column in Ponty end, um, they've not been in the groups in numbers there for a while. Um, I, I heard a few things about them getting told off for standing up or trying to sing and all that. Yeah, That's I heard a bit about that, yeah. that. In the day, but yeah. th- there's not a straight answer, but I feel like winning games and just the attendance as a whole is not helping anything. But mm. I'm, I'm, I don't know what the answer is, to be honest. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird and, and, and like you say, I, I heard rumours about that, but some of the stewards, not all the stewards, I mean, stewards do a great job, but some of them were a bit overzealous and like telling us to sit down and not be, um, you kind of stifle it a bit, like, but like you say, it's not a simple answer, yeah. or being well, it can come back to where it was before, we, you know, we get that element back there and met up with a bit of a fortress for a wayside to come. And I always look at it as well, you know, I mean, Burton, they fetched us under 200 and, I also think that if you get like a decent away following in at Barnsley, oh well, you, you kind of bounce off it. But when there's no beer, it, it kind of don't bounce at the same. It's just a, it was just a weird weird atmosphere that day. I just couldn't put my finger on it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Obviously, like like when we play Leeds, you know, every time against Leeds, when we know they're filling that away end, a lot, a lot of we have a lot more fans turning up. The atmosphere is there; it's a big rival, but it shouldn't come down to like you should be able to have numbers there every week. But like you mentioned, League One, obviously, no disrespect to the smaller teams, but the the, the travelling support is smaller when there's a couple of away fans in that away end, and you can't hear them. There's like when there's loads of away fans, there's usually banter with singing, or yeah. you know, you bounce off each other, like you mentioned. But when there's not many people in that away stand, it does make it hard. But like you say, we do need to make. Oakwell Fortress again because if you remember last time we were in League One um, I'm not saying we had incredible attendances but there were a lot more people there than we are now and we're mm. not saying the attendances won the game won us, won us the game but we didn't lose a game at Oakwell obviously that helped us to get second place that year and we made Oakwell a fortress and we really need that back if we want to push on to do better things this year Yeah I mean Push on, and I'll be one of can start against Ackington and on a bar to wait tennis and about uh, an absolute massive, massive effort with Barnley fans uh, and well fair play, just under two thousand going to Ackington on Boxing Day. I know there's been a bit of an issue with some postal strikes, but box officers said, "Don't worry, if there's duplicates." So when you get to Ackington, your tickets will be there, kind of thing. So fair play to box office for that. But fantastic, fantastic following uh, Taylor on Boxing Day. Um, I mean, just under two thousand. It's I, I just think it's amazing me for on, on such a journey, taking back much straight after Christmas Day, mate. Yeah, when when you compare us to some other teams, obviously, like we've already mentioned, we don't have the greatest of followings, like your Sheffield Wednesdays and your Ipswich and Plymouthers, Plymouth, sorry. They'll look at 2,000 and think that's just an average away following. But for, obviously for us, we're not known for taking big away followings. We're not, we're not known for filling them away stands out. To take 2,000, I think, is pretty good. Cause we've got allocated 2,600, which mm-hmm. at the start, I thought that's quite a lot. Because if I am correct, that's all the standing behind the goal and most yeah. of that sitting bit down the side. So we, we should fill most of that. And if if we can get a lead, there should be some very good atmosphere there. And obviously, Boxing Day, you can't beat Boxing Day football. I think mm-hmm. that's helped get a lot more fans there because of the Boxing Day, you know. It's a good tradition. You can't beat Boxing Day football, but hopefully it can be a good day and three points for a lot of Reds fans that are making that journey. Yeah, be 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 an extended Christmas day, I think, for a lot of them. We'll still be celebrating. Uh, I mean, you're looking at Accrington. I, I mean, they did Derby County a bit of a scare uh, not so long ago, uh, and I thought mm, 
it's not going to be an easy game. I can see this game, Sam being something a bit like a Fleetwood away, where they're going to make it hard for us. Uh, I just thought that we can, like I said, we're away from them, what's going to be there. We can set off from traps. Momentum's going to be going, you know, we're going to be high on confidence, basically going into this. We should be coming away, well, should be, we are getting too carried away and disrespectful to Accrington, but we should be looking at this coming away with a win, though, uh, Taylor, for his own benefit, won't we? Yeah, 100%. Before I came on today, I, I was looking at um, Accrington's recent form. and um, Well, like the Burton game, uh, they came into it like five unbeaten in all competitions. I think Accrington are five or six unbeaten in all competitions. Mm. A few of them were Papa John's trophies, but end of the day, if you don't lose, you're unbeaten. So they're not in the worst form. So mm. And they're at home, so they'll have some confidence against us, obviously. Um, we're going to that it's small, compact ground. They'll, they'll want to get in our faces. But main thing for me, we've got to start fast. Yeah. When I think back to the summer games, especially Morecambe away, when they were bottom of the league at the time, uh, we turned up there expecting it just to be a walkover. And you can't do that in, that in this league. You've got teams like Accrington who have been in this league many, many years and the cause upsets the big teams all the time. Like you said, they give Derby County a scare the other week. So if we don't start fast, it will be a test. Um, I, like you said, I think it will be like the Fleetwood game where they'll sit back. Well, like Markham, they sat back, they took the chance and then the, 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 the rid out the game. We can't do that. We need to be on the front foot, in the faces and go, go, go show them that we want them three points more than them. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, it's like, who do you think is going to be key player for us? I mean, this, this, uh, Tom Edwards and Phillips is rumoured to still be out, so they'll not be making game. Uh, for me, I think important player for me on the day, I think, will be Luca Connell. I think in that midfield area, if he dictates and wants the ball and tries to get a thing going, I don't know about you, but I think Luca Connell will be our key player on uh, that day at Accrington, mate. Yeah, I can agree with that because I, I personally think, like I said earlier, they'll sit back and I think mm. we'll have a lot of ball in that defence slash midfield area. So I just love the way that he sits back. Whoever the other two midfielders are, he lets them push on so they can have that free attacking role. Um, I just want to mention about Matty Wolf. Obviously, he came in against um, Burton. Yeah. Um, obviously, he'd been out a long time. He had to jump into the start in 11 because um, Phillips pulled out late. Obviously, Joe Ackroyd got, I think he was Ackroyd, got pulled from his loan to fill yeah. up the bench spot. Um, and I think uh, he only lasted 60 minutes for what he did. Uh, he looked a bit shaky to start off, which he's going to do. He's been out for a lot of weeks. Um, obviously, he grabbed that assist, great through ball, great run and all that. Um, but yeah, the, the midfield part's going to be the most important. Now we're playing that three in the middle. Mm. Um, for me, it feels more structured. It's giving the wing-backs more effect because when we were playing just the two, it felt like the wing-backs had to come back and tuck in because we had the front three to do the job. But we're more effective down the wings. When you've got people like Williams and Cadden who can put them ball into the boxes, you've got the lads in the middle shipping out wide. I think it's more effective and the middle men will be the key key players, like you said. Yeah, good good, good shout on Mighty Wolf and all, to be fair, because uh, when I saw him got named straight in uh, in starting 11, I'm thinking, I, I hope he lasts. I hope, I hope it won't a risk, if you know what I mean. I know it happened with Nicky Cadden where I think Duffy even said he, he came back a bit too soon. But, you know, yeah. He came in, he did, like you said, 60 minutes. And what he did, do, you know, obviously it's to get up to match speed and fitness, but he did the job. He got the assist and I thought he had a decent game. Um, and when, when you look at that midfield area, I agree with you on that as well. It's a settled area. I mean, we haven't even spoke about Luke Thomas still out injured. Uh, Benson as well. Adam Phillips. So, again, it's competition via, but... What, I, what I'm liking as well is that there's certain partnerships starting to develop and happen. At back, you've got Kitchen and Mads Anderson and Edwards to an extent until he picked up that injury. And you can see certain, like you said, Viva Williams and Cadden, it's like they know their role now because they understand, they understand the team shape and the formation that's required. For Williams coming back in, he offered that. He completely complimented Nicky Cadden uh, well and he got his goal of a week, uh, Williams as well. So I think the the structure and the uh, the way Duff is wanting to play now, you can see it coming through. So which again kind of goes on to like January. Um, I, I probably might not answer where it's gonna what where it's gonna come, but in what areas would you like to see strengthening or adding a bit of quality to? 
So we're all, when it comes to this topic, we're all going to say very similar options, aren't we? We need we needed one in summer. We still need one now. We still need a striker, in my opinion. Yeah. We've got Cole who's chipping away. We've got Norwood who's trying to do the hard work. But we need more strength and depth in that area. Obviously, we had um, Thomas playing that attacking role. Now that attacking role doesn't really exist anymore. Will he play as one of them middle centre mids or will he, will he be classed as one of them forwards? I'm not sure. But we do need a striker. We do need a goal scorer. Obviously, Cole's got seven so far, which is personally more than, and I believe more than a lot of us would have expected him to get at this point of the season. So he's chipping away. Like for me against Burton, he scored that tap in at five yard box, uh, six yard box. Sorry, and everyone's like, it's an easy goal. He didn't have to do it, but he's our striker, and that's where he needs to be. Yeah. So he got his goal. Um, I feel like we need we need more depth on the right hand side. Um, now, now Edwards, uh, and also in my opinion, he's playing as the, the right centre back, which I, I think is better there than as a wing back. Yeah. Um, he's better defensive than going forward. Um, obviously. Jordan Williams is our starting player, but I do feel like we need a bit more depth there. You could say left wing back as well, because we haven't really got anyone to cover Cadden. You could say Honda Mark, but he's not not really been in and out of the squad. And maybe maybe another I'm not sure. Maybe you would maybe centre back because Conor McCarthy's not due back until I think it's end of season. And as it stands with Edwards out, we've only really got three centre backs because mm. Chatham Moon didn't really get much game time. And you've got Cundy, Anderson, Kitchen, yeah. Edwards out, and McCarthy out. So I'd say two or three positions, but the main ones are striker and a wing back. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that as well because, like you said, I think Cole is doing, you know, he's been in right places. I, I know at the beginning of the season, I'm thinking he's not really going to do all, but you can see that. And the thing is, with Cole, his head such as like, Norwood, Aitchison, he's a different striking partner. He's not really a settled partner uh, as such for me. And I think he's doing well. I mean, Norwood, you kind of get what you know, Norwood is. He's an old dead. I'd like, and I said it on a previous video, I'd like to have seen as Ed Norwood probably about three, four seasons ago because I think we'd have probably seen the best out of him. Uh, but a lot of work. I mean, a lot of Norwood's work, again, running off the ball, creating spaces and... If, unless you go, you don't really see or appreciate it. But some of the runs you mix for Devante Cole, I'm thinking, yeah, because he he knows he knows the league, he knows an old football in head. But I, I I get where you're coming from. I'd like to see a striker uh, just compliment uh, Devante Cole. Um, and I always thought either 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 wing back. To be fair, I know Benson played it in uh, against Crewe FA Cup. He filled in there, and I, I thought he played decent. But again, but it's still having to adjust, you know, if it wouldn't have worked out for Benson in that game, it would have been uh, alarm bells, if Williams is out and Edwards is out, oh, we've got beer, so he's, he's scratching the bat again, and for me, we're in a decent position right now, in fourth, a couple of games in hand, we can push on, and I think it'd be a good intent, big club, uh, you know, we don't know how much funds, if any funds are available at all, but to say, yeah, we've identified this, and we need to do just that bit of a push on, without getting too much difficulty, um, so we come to Ackerton game. I mean, kind of agree that we need, you know, a win. I've well, kind of agreed as well as that. Look, Connell, I've, I'm Ackerton are more or less going to play against us. I'm, I'd be, I'd like to come away with a clean sheet, but I, I don't think we will. I think it'd be a tough game. Uh, I'm going to be going two one Barnsley win um, away. I just feel that we'd probably score a goal from a set piece as well. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why, I just, I just feel that we're going to either a corner or a free kick, we're going to get someone like Anderson or someone just to pop up and you know put the ball in back in at me. Yeah, I, I can see why I say that. Personally, I was I looking back at some of our stats recently. Obviously, as you'll know, we've got the best defensive record in the league, which, which is great to see after, after last year when we shipped so many goals at the back and we were a shambles. Mm. But I was looking at a lot of the games and how many shots on target we've conceded. And I think I look back at our 10, maybe last 10, 15 fixtures, and I'd say about 80% of them, them games, we've conceded like less than four or five shots on target, which it doesn't sound like an effective start, but the less shots they have on target, the less chance they have of scoring. And I mm. think as a whole, when you look at the defensive structure, we're so much better because we're, we're reducing them to chances, which is good, which is why I, I personally think we'll keep a clean sheet on Saturday. And I think I think it'll be a one nil. I think it'll be like a Fleetwood game. I'm not. I don't think it'll be as light and as dramatic. But I think we'll just have the edge. We'll nick the goal. And I think our our defensive structure that we've built up so good this season will come in handy, and we'll get that away day win. 
We'll get that away day win. I think it's a good 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 point to leave it on there. Uh, yeah. Taylor, as always, it's been a pleasure having you on, mate. Uh, have a good Christmas as well and uh, New Year. I'll be able to fetch some points back from Atkinson Stanley. Uh, but no, Taylor, it's always been a pleasure to have you on. And people what's watching, uh, if you don't know, you should do. Bounds on tour, check him out on YouTube. He's got some great content. He's got a lot of followers, a lot of views, and a lot of great content at home and away. Uh, check out his videos on there as well. So, Bounds on tour, Taylor. Been a pleasure, mate, having you on. I appreciate it. No, thank you very much. Pleasure to pleasure to talk to you and for shouting out my channel and I hope you have a good Christmas and New Year as well and let's get them three points. Let's get them three points. So everyone watching, please like, subscribe and share. Uh, leave the comments below. Do you agree with me and Taylor about the win? Uh, score predictions and like I said, please check him out. Bounds on tour. Uh, Travelling to Accrington. Every safe journey. Let's bring them three points back going into New Year. One thing left to say, you Reds. You Reds.